Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology again. And we are continuing with another playlist which I had uh, made many, many years back. So, months actually. <laughs> so, today's topic, what is today's topic? Yeah, today's topic is somebody asked me how to deal with horrific scenarios. Sometimes life is like a horror movie. In fact, the scriptures say that Kali Yuga is actually like a horror Yes, Kali Yuga is like a horror movie, you know, it's like horror. <laughs> you don't know when, what is going to happen, with whom, where, how much. And nobody knows, because there's another shloka which says, Padam Padam Yad Vipadam Natesham, which means, Padam Padam, every step, Vipada, there is danger, there are challenges, Vipadam Natesham, right? So, there was one such very dangerous instance within the Mahabharata and many scholars and great acharyas, they, they categorize the different uh, horrific instances of the Mahabharata, as you know very well. Uh, and among them, of course, there are many deadly instances like uh, the killing of Abhimanyu by seven Maharathis together. That was a very horrific ins instance. Then the disrobing of Draupadi, which is known as, uh, uh, very famously known as Draupadi's Vastraharan Leela, where Krishna came and protected her. Uh, that is also a very horrific instance. Then we have the Lakshagra, where the Pandavas, including uh, their mother Kunti, uh, were on the verge of, uh, they, they were not on the verge of death, but they, it's like they were almost dead, you know, the whole palace was burning in uh, Varnavrat and somehow they escaped from it. And there was another horrific instance actually, uh, where uh, this, where Lord Krishna had come as a messenger, as Shantidut, and he was uh, Duryodhan tried to capture uh, Lord Krishna and put him in jail and then we all know what ha happened at the end, all right? So, so these are stories which most of the people in uh, India know especially who are linked with the Vedic tradition somehow or even in the West. But there's one story which we, uh, which uh, very few people have heard actually and when I heard this first time, I, I was like, Wow, <laughs> I mean, that was Dwapar Yuga, you know, it was like, and we are in Kali Yuga, if these kind of things can happen in Dwapar Yuga, imagine what can happen in Kali Yuga, you know, what I'm going to tell now to you. Uh, some of you would know this, but uh, for most of you, if you are not aware, let me say, uh, there's a there's a place uh, when the Kurukshetra war was going on for 18 days, as you know. And then uh, I will not go into much of the details how this happened, why it happened. I will directly come to the point. So once Yudhishthir Maharaj, he is the uh, eldest uh, Pandav and he was the leader of the Pandu, uh, the army of the Pandavas, as we all know. And he was very badly injured once. And he retreated uh, and he went to take a rest in between the Kurukshetra war. Yes, warriors would do that sometimes if things would go out of their control. So they would take some rest, they would take some medicines and then they would come back again, right, to fight more vigorously. But then what happened, uh, Krishna told this to Arjuna that, my dear Arjuna, it seems uh, the king is injured. And instead of fighting now, you should go and uh, see the king. That is more important because uh, he he's our leader after all. So therefore, Arjuna agreed to what Krishna said. And he said, okay, uh, let us go or to the shivir, to the tent and the camp where Yudhishthir Maharaj was uh, resting uh, during the day in the middle of the war. And let's go and... Uh, meet him and then he goes along with Krishna and then he meets and then Krishna and Arjuna enters and Arjuna sees Yudhishthir is lying in the bed and then Yudhishthir Maharaj he sees Arjuna and he says uh, uh, why are you here 
Uh, and then Arjuna says that actually uh, we thought that it is good if we come and have a look at you, your situation, because you are injured. So we thought, let's see you first and then we will again go and fight. And then when Yudhishthira Maharaj heard this, he lost it. <laughs> yeah, there are instances at times, you know, this material world sometimes... Uh, even great personalities like uh, Dharmaraj Yudhishthira, of course, also, he also loses his mind sometimes. And then Yudhishthira Maharaj got so angry, he was like blazing in anger and out of his anger and frustration, he told to Arjuna, Oh Arjuna, you have left our army to be slaughtered by the Kurus and you have come here to see me, to check how I am. Why have you taken this Gandhi in your hand? Throw away this Gandhi. Take the Gandhi. He said like this. <laughs> and then when Arjuna heard, and Arjuna had taken a silent Pratigya one day. Um, silent Pratigya means, uh, Pratigya is a vow basically. So it was silent that anybody who tells me to throw my Gandhi, to throw it, I will kill him. <laughs> And then Yudhishthira Maharaj exactly told that, you know, why are you taking this Gandhi? This Gandhi is useless. Just throw it away. And then when Arjuna heard, you know, he was like, ah. <laughs> Yudhishthira Maharaj has told me to throw my Gandhi and whoever tells me he shall not live to see the sunrise next day. And then out of anger and frustration and ambush, Arjuna takes his sword out and he raises his sword. <laughs> oh my God. It's like a very, it's like a horror movie is going on, you know. Like Yudhishthira Maharaj is there and then Arjuna is about to sever the head of Yudhishthira Maharaj out. He's his own elder brother, you know, eldest. And he's like, he he's, he can't do anything because he had taken a vow. So if he if he does not take out his sword and kill him, so then what happens? He he will uh, he will essentially uh, not follow his vow, which is also very much uh, adharmic. Okay, so so he he was in a dilemma. But then uh, he thought, what can I do after all? I have this vow. So even if it is Yudhishthira, I have to go and rip his head off. Okay. As in Hindi, they say, And then he marched towards Yudhishthir, taking his sword in his hand. And Yudhishthir Maharaj saw this. And he was like, <laughs> My God, I am dead today. Arjuna is about to sever my head off. It was such a horrific inst instance within the Mahabharata. So, so then Krishna saw this. And Krishna is like, Krishna just stopped Arjuna and he said, have you lost it Arjuna? What, what in the universe, what the hell are you trying to do? Have you lost it? You are going, you are going to kill your brother Yudhishthir. Do you know what will happen when Yudhishthir will die? Have you lost it? Have you gone crazy? <laughs> how, how can you even think of doing such an act? You know, killing somebody like Dharma Yudhishthir. How can you even think of doing this? Put your sword down. And then Arjuna says, I don't want to kill him, but I have taken a vow. Anybody who tells me that throw away your Gandhi, I shall not live. I, I shall not spare him. You know, he shall not live. So today I must kill Yudhishthir Maharaj. There is no other alternative. All right. So this was a very horrific instance within the Mahabharata, which happened. And then what happened? Arjuna was going to kill Yudhishthir actually. But then Lord Krishna did something amazing. <laughs> so Krishna said that in the scriptures, there is there are a lot of definitions of mrityu basically. Death or killing somebody. So one killing is when you physically go and kill that person. You take that person's life. That is like you can say, I, I have killed this person physically. But there are other ways of killing also. So for example, <clears throat> uh, for a, uh, as Krishna says in Gita, na, for a person who is honored, dishonored is worse than death. 
So therefore, especially for Chatriyas, for kings, and especially for Brahmins, uh, who were uh, very spiritually minded, and Brahmin doesn't mean somebody is born in a Brahmin family, but who are who are actually following Brahminical standards, okay, very pure, pure lifestyle. And the Chatriyas, of course, especially for <clears throat> these two classes, you know, the administrators, warriors, and uh, um, the Brahmins, for them, it is, it is said that even if you don't kill them physically, but if you insult them, it is like killing them. <clears throat> And insulting a Chatriya is like uh, worse than killing him also, okay? Uh, so, therefore, Krishna told Arjuna that if you insult Yudhishthir in, in place of going and killing him physically, then also it is as good as killing him. Uh, and there are other reasons also because for a subordinate, for a junior, if he uh, insults another senior, then also it is considered to be like uh, killing that person. Okay, so that's very simple. And for the same goes for a younger brother. If he insults the elder, the elder brother or sister or any anybody in the family or in the line of authority you know, or anybody in fact, or if you or even if you are younger or elder or whoever you are, but if you insult a great soul, you know, that is also very treacherous actually because Yudhishthira uh, Maharaj he is actually. He is one of the 12 Mahajans. He is Yamaraj himself. <coughs> so Yamaraj comes twice in the Mahabharata. He comes as Vidur first, who is the uh, stepbrother of Dhritarashtra and Pandu. And uh, then he comes as Yudhishthir, who is the eldest Pandav. Okay. And uh, therefore, uh, Yamaraj is one of the 12 Mahajans. Swambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Kumaro, Kapilo, Manu, Prahlado, Janako, Bhishmo, Balirvaya, Sakivayam, Srimad Bhagavatam says this in the sixth canto. Yamaraj himself tells that these 11 personalities, including myself, they are, the tw they, they are Mahajans. Mahajans means uh, they are authorities of Dharma. And scriptures also say, Mahajano yena gata sapanta. We should try to follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans. Okay. And Bhishma is also one of the 12 Mahajans and Yudhishthira Maharaj also. So, therefore, uh, either you are elder to him or you are younger, or it doesn't matter. If you are like insulting him, that's it. You are insulting a Mahajan. <laughs> all right. So, by all means, it is like. It is as if you are killing that person, basically. All right, and uh, all yeah. So by all standards, okay, from family standards, from seniority, from spiritual standards, from point of religiosity, okay. So then Arjuna he realized, okay, so now I will insult you, Dishti Maharaj, okay, and then he hurls lot of abuses at you, Dishti Maharaj, okay. Oh, king, what have you done? You are this, you are that. You know, I'll, I'll not speak all this here because then it's unnecessarily I will speak blasphemy and uh, you will hear it. That's not important. He just did it out of formality just to take uh, keep his vow. And uh, Arjuna also said at the end, Oh, Yudhishthira, you are the most unworthy person, you know, to sit in the throne, actually. You should have never, you should have never dreamed to sit in the throne, actually. And then by saying this, he stops. And then when Yudhishthira Maharaj hears all this, Yudhishthira Maharaj, uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj says to Arjun that, Oh my dear Arjuna, you are right. In fact, I also said the same thing to all of you in the beginning, that I am not a well-deserving candidate for sitting in the throne. You and Bhima, Bhima especially, you and Bhima are more eligible to sit in the throne than me you are you both are more powerful than me also okay so you you both should actually rule i don't know what a useless person like me what i am doing in this uh, battlefield or you know run uh, thinking of this kingdom and all this i i am the worst person to rule actually okay so you are right bhima should sit in the throne because he is the eldest after me and I will depart to the forest. And I never like this throne. I, I don't like this war. I don't like any of these actually. I don't like wealth and all this also. I just want to sit with the rishis. I want to read the scriptures. I want to learn more about spirituality. That is all I want to do. I just want to live a very secluded life in the mountains. I don't have any desire to rule, to conquer, to punish anybody. 
and I absolutely hate sitting in the throne or doing all these chatriya duties. I am least interested in all this. Okay, and neither am I qualified. But I still don't know why I am doing this because of formality. Because I am the eldest, so I must do. If I don't do, who will do? But no, now you have given a direct, right direction to my uh, inner voice. Now I will depart to the forest, uh, to the Himalayas, and Bhima will rule, and you will be his assistant. All right? He says like this, and he's about to leave. <laughs> So imagine this is these are, all these things are going on between the battlefield, okay? And then Arjuna he he feels as if he will only die if he still leaves because he cannot tol tolerate any separation from his elder brother because uh, he he is also a very great soul himself. So Arjuna requests uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj. He falls at his feet and he requests him that, oh please forgive me, don't. Uh, don't take those words seriously. It was just, uh, I just spoke them to keep my uh, vow. Just, just forget those words. Don't don't pay heed to what I said. You know, you are the most eligible person to sit in the throne. Except you, nobody else deserves to sit. Neither me or Bhima. That, there's no question of anybody. It is you and you and you. And if you go to the forest, you, uh, me, Bhima and Nakul, Sahadev and everybody else including Draupadi, we will also follow you to the forest. So, oh, Yudhishthir, please remember that if you go to the forest, there will be no Kurukshetra battle anymore. It will end now itself, all right? So, please do not go. And by saying this, Arjuna again raised his sword. <laughs> and then this time Krishna is like, what the hell, man? Who is your target this time? <laughs> And then Arjuna tells that uh, I have insulted such a person like uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj, uh, who is my elder brother and uh, who is such a great soul. So I don't have any right to live in this world. I deserve to be killed. So I am now going to take this sword and commit suicide. <laughs> All right, and I can I cannot tolerate uh, this body anymore because this body has abused Yudhishthira Maharaj. So anything which has now because Arjuna had taken another vow <laughs> one day that uh, if if anybody becomes the cause of uh, blood coming out from Yudhishthira's face, then I will I will take his life. Okay, so. <laughs> So, and then when Krishna heard this, he was amazed. He said, you, all you Bharat Vanshis, you are, you are stuck in all these pratigyas, in all these vows, you know. Bhishma had taken vow and because of that, he is now fighting on the, he was fighting on the side of the Purus. And then Yudhishthir had taken vow. I will never, Yudhishthir had also taken a silent vow for your kind information that, I will never disobey any instruction of my seniors. And that is why when this crooked, wicked Dhritarashtra invited him for this horrif horrific gambling match where they lost everything, hmm, he, he did not say no actually. Although Vidur warned him, Krishna warned him, Arjun, Bhima, everybody warned him. But he was like, I have taken a vow. I will never say no to any of my seniors. How can I say no to Dhritarashtra? He is the elder brother of my father. He is like father for me because Pandu uh, did not live long and Pandu had left his body long back when they were very small. So for the Pandavas, Dhritarashtra was like a fatherly personality. In fact, more than their father. Okay, They used to consider him like that. But he never considered them like his sons. Okay, He always used to do partiality. He was always very crooked. So Krishna tells that you Bharatvanshis, you have just complicated your lives by taking all these paramparas, you know, and this, uh, sorry, this pratigyas actually. And Arjuna had also taken a pratigya that uh, when he came to know that uh, Jadrath was the cause of Abhimanyu's death because he had stopped all the Pandavas from going inside the chakra view because of Lord Shiva's boon. <coughs> he took a vow that oh either to by before tomorrow sunset i will kill you or i will submit myself to fire and then krishna is like what should i do with you 
all you are all of you are just creating trouble for me basically that's what krishna meant because krishna cannot tolerate that his devotees are you know suffering like this because of some uh, i would say petty vows okay so krishna now krishna said that my dear arjuna you don't have to kill yourself if you feel that you have incurred sin by insulting your brother or yudhishthira maharaj like this then there is a solution in the scriptures it is said that if somebody praises themselves then it is like killing themselves okay it's like suicide so uh, so arjuna you can do one thing now you can praise yourself okay you show that you are the best personality alive in this universe okay show like this and then arjuna starts praising himself he says oh i have done this i have done that you know humne ye kiya hai humne wo kiya hai अरे हमने तो तब ये किया था तब वो किया था हमने तो अर्जुना स्टार्ट स्पीकिंग लाइक दिस एंड देन ही काम्स डाउन एंड देन दिस डिस्प्यूट इज सेटल्ड एंड देन युधिष्ठिर महाराज देन कृष्णा टेल्स अर्जुना दैट इट्स लेट नाउ वी शुड गो एंड फाइट बैक ओके एंड देन अर्जुन touches the feet of yudhishthir and he takes his blessings and yudhishthir blesses him that may you be victorious in your fight today okay so there you see these are very horrific instances you know when uh, the pandavas two of the pandavas you know like uh, yudhishthir and arjun especially you know they were on the verge of you know, this conflict and arjuna was about to kill him and then kill himself also all right so imagine what would have happened if uh, yudhishthir and arjun would not be there in the uh, pandav sena I mean, it would have i mean of course krishna would have never let that happen but just imagine for a while if that would have happened what would have happened okay so therefore uh, similarly in our lives also we get so many horrific instances like this where things things appear as if if better better i should have died why did i live to see this okay better i would be in hell hell would seem so much better than this suffering which i am having all right so what should we do that time that is the time we should take shelter of krishna because arjuna took shelter of krishna and then krishna somehow resolved it he somehow did it <laughs> all right then how do you take shelter of krishna actually it's not very difficult it's very easy actually if you read the bhagavad gita then you can very easily take shelter okay so let me read a random verse uh, today uh, this is one of my favorite verses This is sixth chapter, forty seventh verse, Bhagavad Gita, six point forty seven. Yogi nam api sarve sham madgate nanta ratmana shraddhavan bhajate yomam samayuk tatamo mata. So there is the translation here. And of all yogis, the one with great faith who always abides in me thinks of me within himself. and renders transcendental loving service to me he is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all that is my opinion yogi naam api sarvesham of all the yogis of all types madgate naam taratmana abiding in me always thinking of me beautiful within himself all right so so this is an example where uh, you can actually know who is a yogi because many times people think that yoga means to do a lot of exercise okay uh, uh make your hands like a robot you know to stand turn your hand hands but that's not what yoga is yoga means one who is uh, thinking of krishna within himself that is krishna's opinion sarvesha means he is the topmost of all yogis okay so therefore this is a very beautiful verse where you can uh, yukta tama the greatest yogi mata means my opinion considered so so when you read the bhagavad gita when you read the shrimad bhagavatam only then you can know what krishna wants you to do when you have horrific instances okay and now sometimes you may feel that oh but i can uh, i mean uh, i can read the gita but it doesn't answer my queries well it will answer either directly or indirectly directly means if you are 
fortunate enough uh, you will find a verse which will uh, suit your which will exactly tell you the solution to the problem that you are facing okay it, it it will not be a very gross solution it will be the solution will be very subtle and very deep so if you read about uh, if, if you if you read that shloka sometimes randomly you, you just try this you know i am giving you a blank challenge whenever you are having any problem just open the gita and uh, just 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 do just do it random like this okay just random you open a verse okay you will find wow <laughs> we reach the conclusion of the bhagavad gita this is 18 chapter 66th verse this is the conclusion of the bhagavad gita actually Yes, Sarva Dharma Antaritya Ja Maam Ekam Sharanam Vraja Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Ishami Masucha Abandon all varieties of religion and surrender, just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear Masucha. So, therefore, that is when you get solutions directly. Okay, Or you may get it indirectly. How do you get it indirectly? Indirectly means uh, you are connected to some guru or some authorized parampara who when you enquire then your guru will give you a practical suggestion. So that is how you get solutions from Krishna indirectly. Okay. Now Arjuna was very elevated so Krishna was there with him. But we may not be that elevated that uh, like Arjuna that Krishna directly tells us. Okay. So we can give an attempt to read the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. If we get the answer it's fine. If you do not get then you need to approach your guru and ask that I am having this problem, but what is the solution? Okay, then your guru will answer through Krishna. Okay, so actually, uh, Krishna answers through the guru, actually. All right, so that is the solution. This is how you deal with horrific instances, and whatever your situation is, I am very sure. I mean, I don't know what it is, maybe it's very dangerous, but. Imagine this situation, you know, the entire Kurukshetra war was about to take a U-turn because of this instance. If Yudhishthir would have been killed at the hands of Arjuna, okay. So, therefore, uh, life always gives us horrific situations like this. At least I have seen once in a month or once in a year, uh, no frequency here. Or maybe once in a decade. So then what do you do? And... The, inc the incidents may be small, but it may last for a lifetime. Sometimes some scars, they last for a lifetime. They are never healed. Okay. So, so therefore, we really need to take shelter of Krishna to understand what should we do in such situations. All right. That will be all from my side. Thank you very much for your patience. And uh, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, Regarding your horoscope, then you can always go down to the description section of my videos down below. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.